gods had predicted that evil was to come to the peaceful land of Tibet from the east. As the Dalai Lama says, at nightfall before leaving the palace, I went for the last time to the shrine dedicated to Mahakal, my personal protector divinity. This signifies not only gratitude, but a safe return. This return is still a question mark. On the 17th of March, 1959, the Dalai Lama had to flee from Lhasa. The ancient prediction had come true. For the Tibetans, the Dalai Lama is not only their ruler, but also their spiritual supremo, their god-king. Cruel circumstances were forcing him to abandon his land. One lakh Tibetans were privileged to follow their almighty into exile. But millions were left back in Tibet to their fate. On March 31st, 1959, after a perilous journey across the cold deserts, the Dalai Lama reached India. India, a country who does not have enough for her own people, but a country bound by her tradition to view each guest as God. The weary Tibetans had found a home in India. Forty years have passed, but the flight of the Tibetans from their motherland has not stopped. Every year, thousands risk their lives to make the hazardous journey into India. Some survive, some don't. But each of them has their own story to tell. Mulji set off for the land of solace with just the clothes on her back. It took her two months to walk to Dharamsala, eating nothing but wild flowers on the way. Mike Lamlo was only a child when he was put into a gunny bag mounted on a mule by his parents, who promised they would soon follow. Years have passed, and Mike is still waiting. Buddhism, a religion that was born in India, had virtually died out by 1960. Within the hushed corridors of these thousand years old gompas in the Spiti Valley, a pure form of Buddhism was practiced. It has been brought back to its home soil by the Tibetans. The Dalai Lama and his followers realized that they had to maintain their identity in a foreign land and also be financially independent. So the lay Tibetans started small businesses in various parts of India. And the religious leaders strictly adhered to their traditions.
The Namgyal Monastery founded in the Potala Palace by the third Dalai Lama has been rebuilt here to carry out the religious activities and spiritual duties of the Dalai Lama. Every year, hundreds of mothers give their sons away to monkhood to follow the Eightfold Path and thus to attain nirvana or salvation. Buddhism believes that the minds of all humans can be cleared of strains and affliction by bringing waves of compassion into the universe. Thus, when hatred is vanquished, liberation is achieved. This belief in compassion gives Tibet eternal hope. This faith in their religion is the one thing that has seen Tibetans through many, many hard years. It is also the one thing that has brought international focus on their plight. But it has not been such a smooth transition, least of all for their deities. When Jokong was ransacked during the Cultural Revolution, a few Tibetans at the risk of their lives rummaged through the rubble and managed to salvage two face images of Avalokiteshwar and smuggled them into India via Nepal in 1967. Born out of a tear of Buddha when he cried at human suffering, an incarnation of mercy, Avalokiteshwar's newly crafted image was constructed in 1970 at Sukhla Khan. This Namgyalma stup is a memorial to the Tibetans who lost their lives in their struggle for freedom. Day and night devotees turn prayer wheels as they circumambulate the stoop reciting mantras. It is a monument to the determination of a suppressed people who preserved their distinctive way of life against overwhelming odds.
Another story of survival against great odds is the story of the Bon religion. Bon is the oldest existing religion of Tibet. The arrival of Buddhism threatened its very survival. So Bonpo masters embraced Buddhism and within its folds managed to preserve Bonpo teaching and scriptures. At the beginning of the 15th century, Bon studies substantially strengthened, which led to the foundation of Menri Monastery in 1405. Today, the Menri Monastery in Tibet may be in ruins, but in the Bon Monastery here in Dolanji, the old religion still flourishes. Hope for the Tibetan civilization lies in its children. Children have a very special place in Tibetan culture, for any child could bear the soul of a great master. The 14th Dalai Lama, the son of a poor peasant, was discovered at the age of two to be the future God King of the Tibetans. The controversial discovering of two Karmapas in 1992 and two Panchen Lamas in 1995 by the reincarnation belief is a story of innocence being trapped in a bitter power struggle. The political system of the government in exile saw a new phase when the first democratic elections were held in 1970. But for important issues, it still seeks advice from oracles. Nichung Monastery here is the seat of performing oracles. The original Nichung Monastery had 115 monks. In 1959, the monastery was razed to the ground. However, six monks managed to escape to India to continue its complex tradition. Kal Chakra, meaning cycle of time, is the highest yoga tantra epitomizing Buddhist teaching. Making such a Kal Chakra mandal is a painstaking process and yet a labor of love for most Tibetans. It is used during meditation to help practitioners visualize the Kal Chakra deity and his pure environment. Unfortunately, the scythe of time spares no one, and the Tibetans are worried. Every Wednesday, the entire community gathers behind the Namgyal Monastery at Maklaud Ganj to pray for the longevity of His Holiness. What will become of them when the 14th Dalai Lama passes on? He spearheaded their struggle for freedom. He brought world attention to their doorsteps. But time is running out and their goal of a free Tibet is yet to be achieved. There is also another worry. To the Tibetan children born in the last four decades, Tibet may be just another country. The stories their parents tell of the atrocities they suffered are at best folk tales. Will these children ever feel the pain of the past generation? Will they identify with their brothers and sisters left behind in Tibet? 
Will they be willing to leave financial prosperity and go back to the forbidden land? Or has Tibet become forbidden to her own children? The white stones the Tibetans put outside their homes to ward away evil did not work in their motherland. But the tying of prayer cloths shows their undying hope. Hope that the winds of the land of Buddha will carry their prayers to the heavens. And that one day, those prayers will be heard. Tibet, the geographical entity, may be elsewhere, but its spirit lives on in India. In McLeod Ganj and other Tibetan settlements where the sights, the sounds and the smells of their native land have been faithfully preserved. <laughs>